All right, in the last video, we took a look at um, a little analysis of this data set and found some, found some interesting things that we can extract from this uh, bicycle data. Um, now what I like to do is kind of take this uh, procedural, nonlinear thing that we've done and linearize it a little bit so that it's easier for someone else to follow what the analysis is. And this is kind of the, the core of going from a, a Jupyter notebook data exploration to a more reproducible result of an analysis. Um, so I'll show you what we do here. The, the first thing we tend, I like to do is um, take, the, take the imports and put them at the top. You know, we did plt.style.use seaborn. Uh, I think we had to import pandas as pd. Um, import numpy as np. And sometimes it's nice too to have like a uh, section. So we say um, get data, and I'm going to split these apart because this is, this is pivoting it. And now here we did um, principal component analysis, um, right? So let's, let's take that and we'll, we'll put this at the top too because that's what we're going to use. And um, we have the x, x2. And um, I'll combine these two cells because they can be together, and then we, we scatter plot both of those. Let's make sure this works. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. And now um, let's do unsupervised clustering. Uh, we can put this Gaussian mixture model import up there. So you can see what, what's going on here. We're basically, basically cleaning up things, making it a little more fit for for human consumption and um, makes it makes it easier to follow what's going on. Um, so here, these are two plots that we might want to compare together. So I'm going to put them on the same thing, and I'm actually going to put them on the same figure. Let's see. We'll use the subplots command. We want a one by two grid, and we want the fig fig size to be um, to be let's say 14 by six or something like that. And so this, we want it to plot on x 0, and we want this x equals x 1. And if I did that all right, we should actually, should get one plot with both of these things on them. Um, takes a little while because it's plotting a lot of lines, and it has to render all those things. Yeah, so there, there are both of those. And we, we could even do like x 0.set title. Um, <laughs> purple cluster and x one dot set title red cluster um, yeah so we'll, we'll run those again now down here remember we're um, comparing with day of week so we show that and then now um, um, analyzing outliers, uh, the following points are days, uh, are weekdays with a holiday-like pattern. And then you can, we might be able to do something here, like even link to this, uh, this news story right here. So what's up with February 6, 2017? Um, <laughs> snowstorm, right, so, um, and, yeah, so that should, so now that we have all this, all this together and a little bit organized, let's, uh, let's go to the restart kernel, restart and run all, and hopefully we got all the imports in the right place and we got all the little, little pieces that we need. Sometimes this will pop up with an error in one place or another. And that just means that we've forgotten to rearrange things in a in a useful way. Um, now, oh, why is this going so slow? I guess it's uh, oh, there we go. It's slow because it's it's trying to plot lots of lines here. So we let this go and um, get the unsupervised clustering. Compare. Here's the another slow one with lots of lines that it's rendering. And when we get to the end, hopefully everything will run. So. That's great. Now we now we have this nice little data. Um, let's let's put a title up here and say analyze um, 
unsupervised analysis of days of week. And a little description here, we could say something like treating crossings each day as features to learn about the relationships between various days. So something like that. And now um, you can see with just a, a few minutes of going through this, we have something that's much easier to follow. We make sure it runs straight from the beginning to the end. We can look at the principle of component analysis. And you can imagine even going, um, going a little further and like writing some descriptions in here so that people could read it. And actually, um, I, I did something like this in my blog a couple of years ago, um, jakevdp.github.io. Um, Learning Seattle's work habits from bicycle counts. This is basically the same same data, you know, minus minus a year and a half worth of data, and doing the same sort of plots and the same sort of analysis I just walked through there, and um, you can you can see that uh, the the Jupyter notebook allows you to combine all this stuff together. We could go a little bit farther, and we could maybe take some of this um, some of this data, like the the pivot table step, and maybe some of this this stuff, and put it in its own function in our uh, in our Jupyter workflow um, package. If we wanted to, if we wanted to go further with this, we could unit test some of it if we're interested in that. But um, for the most part, I just wanted to show you that, that this is kind of the way that I that I tend to work when I'm doing things, moving from from data exploration in a very nonlinear kind of back and forth trial and error way, and then at the end turning that into uh, a notebook that's much more linear, um, restarting and running the kernel, make sure making sure it's reproducible. Sometimes, if we want to, putting tools in the in in a package that goes along with it. And what you end up with uh, once you get commit all of this is a really, really nice reproducible workflow for doing your data analysis, for downloading the data. And it's something that if you were to go and say write a paper on this, you could point someone to and they'd be able to go straight back and um, do that and reproduce your analysis. So last thing I'm going to do is add this, uh, is this an untitled notebook? Yeah, let's re re name this, um, which I unsupervise, unsupervised analysis. So I'm going to go get add unsupervised analysis. Um, okay, this one was modified. I don't think I did anything to it, anything important to it though. So just get commit minus m, add unsupervised analysis, push origin master. All right, and now we have it on GitHub for all the world to see our, our big analysis. So this is the end of the video series. Uh, I maybe do more, might do more in the future if people ask me to, but um, I hope you learned something here, and I hope uh, that typing along with me and following me uh, as I did this is helpful to you. So thanks very much.